He is known as the toughest man in the world. Presenting Andrew the Brick Wall Sosa. What is up, my friends? How y'all doing? This is your boy Sosa Points coming at you with the Wish 2023 movie review early screening. There will be spoilers in this, but I promise you, especially if you've read the title, you don't have to worry about the spoilers. I'm not going to ruin the movie at all for you. It's going to be mostly adults listening anyway. And parents, you're going to want to know about this because you're not interested in this movie anyways. But there's your spoiler warning just in case you want to be turn away and click away now. Before we go ahead and get started, please consider joining my memberships as I was demonetized on YouTube. Do the PayPal option. I know PayPal is a garbage company and they take way less of a cut than YouTube does anyway. And I need to be able to bring up my own system that I I don't have to rely on them anymore, but just in the meantime, it would be highly appreciated. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. And in either event, I know times are tough with the creepy Joe inflation and all. Please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications on all so you can see all my future content. Smash that thumbs up, like button, leave a comment, support the messed up YouTube background, and share this around with everybody that you know. Follow me on my social media platform. Get on with it. All right, I'm going to start out with some of the pros because it's not all bad. And whenever you read the title, you're going to be like, oh, it's blatant. It's not blatant. It's all still subliminal messaging, but they're getting much more bold with their messaging. They're not even trying to hide their Libya agenda anymore. They're not even trying to pretend like it was meant to be something else. They're going full throttle on the identity politics and, and literally make an allegory for America within this show. But the pros, it was actually kind of funny. I It was had lots of musical numbers like most Disney shows do, but this one had even more than the normal. But I actually thought the singing was good. Chris Pine does a phenomenal job acting voice and the story is actually kind of cute in its own way. The animals are all cute and everything. And the animation style is definitely different. I don't know how they're doing this one. It's one of those that looks kind of cheaply made, but it allows for the flow of 3D you know, behind a green screen most of the time. That's what it looks like. So there's pros and cons to the animation, but it's not anything that's going to be throw you off. It's actually going to seem probably kind of quite nice. And it actually was funny. The goat is everyone's favorite, literally the little baby goat. And he has this super low voice and it's, it's hilarious. Now, some of his part of the humor does seem a little strong. He just, everyone expects a laugh every time he talks and people laugh kind of like out of necessity. Like they feel like they have to obligation. But not everything he says is funny. But some of the stuff he does do is funny. All right, those are the pro. Oh, another pro. It's only an hour and a half. Very short movie. And, you know, it's not the most unsafe kid thing for kids to go and see. It's not. But let me explain it to you. And this is something that you're going to have to tell your kids after two, especially when they're older, depending on their age, of course, because you don't want to spoil their innocence. All right, here we go into the, the bad part. The bad part is just the subliminal messaging. I didn't have any complaints whenever it came to the rest of the stuff. The quality of this show is actually very good. All right. But here's the allegory. Like I said, America is equals this utopia. And they actually use terms like shareholder and utopia within this one. They literally use it. Oh, it's going to be a new utopia. The white man is the bad guy. Of course, Chris Pine. Duh. You know, identity politics, BS, Disney. What else did you expect? But in the show, I kid you not, guys, this is real. He literally creates a utopia for everyone to live in. And this utopia, this landmass, this island that he rules over, is an allegory for the United States. Now, is the United States a utopia? Is it perfect? No. But is it a utopia compared to anything else we have been in most of the rest of the world? It absolutely is. But that's the direct comparison. There's no, there's no misinterpretation. It's not me reading into or anything like that. No. But... You know, Chris Pine represents the founding fathers you know, in making this you know, a wonderful, blessed United States. And what he wants in return for other people immigrating there, which he allows everyone to immigrate from, all sorts of people of colors, all sorts of race and genders, all that stuff. Like, he allows them all in, just like the right does. You just have to be good people. And what he does is he exchanges their wish, which is basically like their kind of like soul power a little bit, what they want most in life. And he gets that from them, and in exchange, they can live there for free, rent-free, everything is provided to them, they live the most wonderful life, peace, unity, friendship, family, friends, food, every single luxury of life is provided to them in exchange for this wish. Now, they don't feel quite as complete within themselves afterwards, and it makes a very big point on this, but they still get to live the best life. And uh, the the girl, the main uh, the main... She's really an antagonist, but, you know, the movie tries to paint her as a protagonist. 
she actually wants to get her grandpa's wish granted for his 100th birthday, and the reason he doesn't want to grant the wish, the in the king who has the wish, is because it's too vague. He knows the power of wishes. He knows m- monkey's paws. He knows that some if wishes, if they're left too vague, will actually come true and not benefit the rest of society. It's basic it's kind of like a rip off of the new Wonder Woman movie, you know, the the latest second one that was a drastic reduction from the first one. But that's what it essentially kind of is. And basically it's an allegory for uh, al- al- allegory for our deepest desires in life. Like for men, whenever we're married and we want to go out there and spread our seed, but we have a family at home. It's not, you know, going and sleeping with those other bunch of women. And I know, you know, some people think it's not so bad, all that stuff. In my personal view, in my opinion, that's how we're supposed to do things. But I'm, you know, I'm basically kind of like going through a transformation about all these thoughts. But that's what the Bible says. And for women, it's, you know, keeping your mouth shut whenever you get annoyed or not letting your emotions run away with you. It's different things like that. And those are the sacrifices that we have to make in order to have a healthy society and family within ourselves and our community. That's what that wish stands for. And that's what the left absolutely detests. They think that they don't think they actually know that they can't, but they pretend as if to say Oh, you can do whatever you want. You can be however you'd like and everything will be happy. The only reason that we don't have a utopia is because there's evil white men over here. You know, they're the ones that are messing up everything when we can do anything that we want and everything will be fine. No, that's not the way it works at all. But that's what they're trying to portray within this movie. I kid you not, guys. At the end, it says, and they all live happily ever after. They got rid of the king the one who made this utopia and had this system, they got all their wishes, and apparently everything worked out just fine. And literally within the show, he's just uh, he also talks about that some people, you know, don't know the consequences of their wishes being granted. Like, you, you heard that expression, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it? That's exactly what he talks about too. And he literally even says within the movie, like, you're young, you are you don't know any better. But no, the movie tries to make it seem as if these women of color know better than all the, you know, these 19-year-olds, these 14-year-olds, she's basically like 16 or something like that, that they know better, that they're pure and these evil white men are evil that have made this utopia. Don't trust them. Everything will be okay if we dismantle everything and the entire system. And that's what they do at the end, and they try to make it seem like everything's going to be okay at the end, and it's not. One of the things that drove me the most insane is that this king has a queen, and he has, it, the movie openly says, he has been a benevolent leader. He has been a wonderful leader throughout this entire time. He's an old man. His entire life, he does. He has done nothing but good and done nothing but help suppress the desires that oftentimes destroy one's own self. That's all he's done. And they all trust him. They all love him. But he makes, she says, oh, he's keeping the wishes from you. She's like, they're not yours. No, they literally gave them to him. It is theirs. That's the stupid Indian, you know, Israel, you know, uh, uh, you know, the the terror group that starts with an H. Not going to say it on YouTube for the, uh, you know, censors. But it's the same thing. Like, no, it's his now. And he's like, no, I can take it back. Uh, I can give the wishes all back to the other people. No, they made an agreement. They made a trade. They have lived a wonderful life. And her grandpa even puts her in her place and says, no, everyone lives a wonderful life. You cannot be selfish like this or else you're going to destroy everything. He says that and she does it anyways. And again, third time to charm. The movie is trying to portray it as if that's how it would work out in reality. Like everything would be fine if we just destroyed everything and all our moral systems. No, no. But of course, you know, she ends up having to say the grandpa because of course the evil white man, you know, is bad. And oh, it's just so bad. And the part that drove me the worst is that he has a wife. He has treated her like a queen because she is a queen. She has treated, he has treated her like the most wonderful human being on this planet. They don't have any kids, so he has done nothing but focus on her and provide her the best life and be the best husband possible. He makes one mistake, and she literally decides to throw him in a dungeon for the rest of his life. Like, the the lack of appreciation, the lack of gratitude that we have from kids today and that the left is trying to indoctrinate and inculcate within our children, like, the, the amount of disloyalty 
Like, she actually seemed like a good wife, and she was. But then she's just able to throw him away as if he's meaningless? Like, way to show off how women really are, bro. Like, like is that really what you're trying to... Like, Disney is actually trying to portray that, because what they do is they take women, and they take people of color, and they give them the most horrible movies so that we will automatically associate women and people of color with bad production and quality in movies and entertainment, and we won't want to see them. That's... A very smart tactic that is almost unbeatable. It's very hard to get around that. Like, how do you avoid that repetition of pattern? You can't ignore patterns. That's what dumb people do. But, yeah, the, just the level of, oh, wow, the, the way she just switches off the love for him, disregarding everything else that they've ever been through, just like, wow, I, I couldn't believe it. It, it. It's disgusting, honestly. It and it made me just be like, oh my God, how am I supposed to have faith in relationship? Because that's a hard thing for me, guys. I've been screwed over so many times, you know, <laughs> gone through a lot. And you try to put your trust in someone. And then we have and we have today's Hollywood culture trying to put this stuff within everybody's minds. Like I, it, it was absolute trash, absolutely disgusting. Now, that being said, if you give this qualifier to your children and you teach them these lessons that that's not reality and this is a fantasy, this is a fairy tale, then it, it you know, it's okay to go and see because there's lots of cute things about it. The little star is really cute and all that stuff. It's a very uh, plot and do stupidity kind of thing, but yeah, just got to give you all that warning. But that being said, if you want to go and take your kids to see it, if they want to, make sure they have this lesson or that you teach them this later on. And then you, then you can let them see the movie and everything will be fine. And so it's up to you. I personally, if I'm going to be honest with you, I'd tell you not to even take them to go and see it because of this stuff. We don't need even the least little bit of this, you know, lefty BS that, it, you know, uh, we don't need it. Like, it, it coming into our children at all. But that's just my thoughts. You're not going to be faulted at all or have any judgment for anybody, including me, if you do go and, go and take your kids to see it. Because, like I said before, there were some good stuff in there. I'm never going to let my bias get in the way of that true reporting. So, like I said before a million times, let me know what y'all's thoughts are. If you have any specific questions, I'll happily answer them in the comments. Sub, like, hit the bell, and all, comment, share, all the good stuff. Follow me on all my social media platforms like Facebook, Rumble, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, BitChute, honestly. Links to that being in the description and first comment. Check out the rest of my channel. There's something right here for everybody. Kanganasura, Baki, Dragon Ball, uh, Fiction content, political, humor, UFC fight coverage, my own professional Muay Thai fights. Again, some link in the description, first comment, check out the rest of my channel. Uh, also, there should be some tasks up on the screen right now or in a couple seconds of other content I think you'll enjoy. And some speed uh, runs to that content that I was mentioning. And I will see y'all later. Peace out, my friends. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. I don't know what they say. Let's go, Brandon.